Welcome everyone to this session on software-defined storage for cloud high availability. I'm Francisco Piccolini, uh, the Open Source Community Manager for Open Nebula. Uh, on this session, we are very lucky to have two great members of the Open Nebula community. On one side, we have Philip Reisner, the CEO of Limbit, the open source software-defined storage solution. And the, on the other side, we have Philip Cook, Philippe Cook, Principal System Engineering at D6, the world's leading internet exchange operator. Welcome to both of you, and uh, Don, and thanks to all the attendees for joining us today. Remember that you can use the chat to send your questions. And now I leave the floor to our colleagues, first from Limit. All yours, Philip. Thanks for the introduction, and here we go. So um, what Limbit can do for you is basically four things. It is you protect your data, um, no matter how many hardware parts fail. We keep your services always online, and especially in the context with uh, Open Nebula. Um, shape your destiny in regards to your data means that all we offer to you is open source software, so you stay in control. And last but not least, we do all that with best performance. So start with item number one, how are we protecting your data? Um, we leverage on a technology called DUBD, and that's developed by Linbit. And when you look here at this orange box, that's uh, like the Linux kernel, and here we have some layers, that's the IO stack. And at a certain point below the buffer cache, we insert the DUBD replication driver. And whenever something, whenever something is written, it's replicated all the way to another node. Um, and we look at the same thing from an other point of view. It is one side of such a DBD pair is primary and it replicates to the secondary. And it becomes primary uh, when it's opened by something in the context with Open Nebula. This is the moment when it's opened by KVM. Um, it can replicate multiple volumes concurrently and that's then a consistency group. Um, it can replicate to multiple secondaries concurrently. Uh, so that might be up to 31. Um, and these replication links, they can be switched between synchronous and asynchronous replication while it is online. Um, certain nodes, may take part in a DBD cluster, even if they don't have a local replica of the complete data set. And they can be promoted to primary. In other words, the application can run there. So the KVM can run on a machine where you don't have a local replica of the data. So if it needs to read something from the data, it sends the reads to the nodes which have a replica of the data. If it needs to write something, it sends it to both concurrently. The reads are like load balanced, the writes are sent to all the nodes with disk. Um, so that's the protect your data path uh, part. Now let's go to the, how we keep your services always online, how we keep your uh, VMs running in Open Nebula. Um, so you see here, we also work in different scenarios but today we will only be, talk about how it works with Open Nebula. Oops. And, <clears throat> and so between Open Nebula and DVD, there is an other component that's called LinStore. And um, LinStore comes with a few parts. So one is the LinStore controller. So you will have one LinStore controller running together with the Open Nebula. Uh, it has failover locations um, in case the physical machine fails, right? And then on every node of the cluster, you will have a Linster satellite running. So the Linster satellite is like a node agent and it's completely configuration less and stateless. So you need to make sure the daemon runs there and then the controller will reach out to it. And this satellite that is used to control 
uh, your local LVM or CFS and uh, the, the DBD um, module on, on these machines. And what else do we have here? We have a, a REST API and on top of that, a CLI and a driver and a driver for open level. How does it work by example? Um, let's imagine you have a cluster of six nodes, uh, six open nebula nodes, and each of those nodes has built-in storage devices and enough CPU and memory to run the actual workload to run your VMs. Now, through the driver, uh, open nebula tells uh, Linstore when it needs to have uh, when it needs a new virtual volume. And um, through the, th in, in the data st store in Open Nebula, that is, there's a one-to-one -one association to a Linster resource group. And in the Linster resource group, we know how many replicas uh, you want to have of each virtual volume. So let's assume it's two. Um, so, and for the orange VM, it will create one replica on the same node where the VM itself is running, plus one replica somewhere else for high availability purposes. Same for the black VM. So one on the same machine, one somewhere else. And now what can happen to such a cluster? Let's say one of the VMs is moved. Um, then the underlying DBD resource is reconfigured on the fly to contain now a diskless node here. And the KVM process can, after it has been live migrated, can access the data um, transparently, only that now also the read requests are going over the network to the two replicas it has. Um, after um, and you, you can configure a time triggered policy that if that is running for a certain amount of time in this configuration where VM is completely separated from its storage nodes, that Linster tries to migrate the data to the location where the VM runs. And so that looks like this. So it will allocate a third replica for the data. It will start to move all the data to this node. And when this process is done, it will remove this replica since the policy only wants two replicas, not three for a single of your virtual volumes. So this is just one example how this can move. And um, quickly mentioning what types of applications are usually used on top of Linbit SDS. Well, everything that needs data, like databases, uh, message queuing systems, transactional databases, analytical databases. So everything with data is important, with structured data is important. Okay, I'm coming here back to my slides with the four, four topics I want to talk about. Uh, now, shape your test, shape your destiny. What I mean with that is, that Linbit SDS is completely open source and that is not very usual uh, when it comes to storage software. Um, so we are a company of about 40 people. Most of us are located in, in Europe. We have, a we have a team of about 15 in the United States and we have a very close exclusive partner in Japan and cover the rest of the world with partners. Uh, our business model is purely selling support subscriptions. And with that comes uh, prepared packages of the open source software um, and yeah, different SLAs. So the business model is very similar to the Red Hat business models. So it's all open source, but if you want to use the software in a convenient way, um, better get one of our support subscriptions. And last not least, let's talk a few minutes about performance. Um, 
often I get the question, how it is, is it different from Ceph? And the main difference is this is built for block storage only, while Ceph uh, has a much broader scope. It's also for a file system and an object storage. And since we're built for block storage only, it's also very optimized for this case. So we have this complete in-kernel data path. Um, we completely allocate our volumes to nodes in the moment a virtual volume is created. And that way uh, we save time at IO processing time, right? It's built on top of existing components. So it leverages DBD, it leverages LVM, CFS, or well, one of the two, and looks if you need uh, data at rest encryption or VDO, if you want to have uh, deduplication in the stack. Um, and it is very well suited to be used in a hyper-converged way. So the best is um, you have your hypervisors and have storage devices within the hypervisors. Because then with this co-location of workload and the replica, uh, your reads get really very low latency and it saves you a lot of traffic on your network. Um, here are a few links to some uh, performance measurements. So in 2020, uh, 2019, we had access to a 12 node cluster in an Intel lab, we achieved 22 million IOPS there. Uh, very recently, we broke that record on only three nodes, very beefy our machines. Um, that's about it in my short session here. Thank you a lot for, the, for your attention. Many thanks for such a great introduction, Flip. Uh, now it's time to see how D6 is combining Open Nebula with Limbit. Hi all, I'm Philip Kuk from DKIX, one of the largest internet exchange points worldwide. An internet exchange point is a technical facility that enables the interconnection and the exchange of internet traffic between multiple internet service providers, content providers, content delivery networks and other network operators, so-called autonomous systems. Participating autonomous systems exchange routing information of their connected networks using the border gateway protocol so that these networks can be reached locally via the IXP instead of routing it through multiple upstream providers or distant peering locations. DKIX has more than 40 IXPs and over 2,600 connected networks worldwide. In Frankfurt, we have a peak traffic of nearly 20 terabits per second. We are growing and installing a number of new internet exchange points worldwide every year. Today, I'd like to share some of our experience and the reason why we ended up at Lean Store and Open Nebula. For our customers to be able to peer rerunning, apart from the switching and routing infrastructure, a set of Linux VMs providing different services. The most important of them are the root servers. Installation of a new IXP was quite time consuming and torturous until we realized we needed a new concept, a much better one. So we started with a green field and thought of a new blueprint. This is more or less the topology of a remote IXP. Here we have two locations per site which shows the server, firewall, router, management switch and peering lab switch each. The servers are connected to the peering LAN to provide root server services and more. Every device is redundant. The new blueprint not only included a new network setup, also a new and automated way of deploying machines and setting up and providing services had to be found. So what were our challenges? Why did we choose LeanStore and Open Nebula? Redundancy. Most of the services are fairly important for IP traffic exchange. Loss of these services could result in some ISPs or companies being cut off from other networks they usually peer with. So having redundancy and failover, as well as being able to live migrate some services for maintenance, is a must-have. For redundancy, failover and live migration, we would need some kind of shared storage or at least data replication for both hypervisors. An external distributed storage solution, like having a NetWeb or EMC at both sides, is nice, but also it's very expensive. A single external storage is a single point of failure. 
as it would be located only at one side of the sites and network disruption between them would kill the other hypervisor's disk backend. We don't want to install tons of hardware just to run some simple VMs, the fewer the better. If we would only run some root servers and nothing else, a set of Raspberry Pis would probably be fine too. Always keep a simple setup. Lots of features may be nice for product evaluation, but in reality, we only need a tiny subset of them. A high complexity is bad when having to deal with outages or disruptions, especially at night right after being woke up from the monitoring system. Scalability, who knows how many ISPs we're building in the future. Extensible. For automation, we need an easy access on creating block devices or deploying VMs. An API or at least some Python modules would be nice for enhanceable integration. Cost. Guess what? We need to make money and a euro saved is a euro earned. So, why Open Nebula? In contrast to OpenStack, CloudStack, Eucalyptus and others, Open Nebula does not need many components to run. All Open Nebula services, the web server and the database, can run on a single server. We started with Open Nebula 5.10. The installation and the setup was easy and straightforward. We set up a server with CentOS 7, installed the community Open Nebula packages and figured out the user interface, started some VMs from the marketplace, played around with it, VM templates, networks and such. We found that the feature set, compared to big players like VMware, was limited but absolutely sufficient for us. Speaking of VLAN bridges, SRIOV, adding networks on the fly, VM templates, optional live migration, online disk resizing, and an API to which our Ansible modules can talk to. Now, why did we choose Lean Store? For redundancy and live migration, we need some kind of shared disk backend. This could be an external storage or, if using local storage on the server itself, a distributed file system or a distributed object storage or something like that, which would require at least a third node. So that was no option for us. DRVD is the only solution I'm aware of that provides real-time replication to another node in a two-node setup. I've been using DRVD in previous versions in the past, both for master-slave and master-master setups, so I knew it would meet our requirements. With DRVD 9 or LeanStore, DRVD even became less complex to handle and came up with some useful new features without becoming bloated. The community and LeanBit's support and the response time was one of the key factors. Also, LeanStore integrates nicely with Open Nebula after installing the corresponding connector and provides an API that we could use for our Ansible modules. So, after our evaluation, we decided that the combination of Open Nebula and LeanStore was exactly what we were looking for. We installed a server in Frankfurt dedicated to host Open Nebula in its database, as well as the LeanStore controller and a LeanStore satellite that would be used for our tiebreaker devices. The setup we used was comparable to our testing environment like CentOS 7 on a performant machine, MariaDB, Memcached, an Apache web server, Open Nebula 5.10 and LeanStore 1.7 if I remember correctly. The satellites are running CentOS 7 or later, Oracle Linux 8. There are three concurring LeanStore connectors or add-ons for Open Nebula. Add-on LeanStore from Open Nebula, add-on LeanStore UN which is community driven and LeanStore Open Nebula from LeanBit. The community-driven connector is written in Bash, the other ones in Python, but regarding features, there's not much of a difference between them. We rolled the dice and took the LeanBit connector. To keep the setup simple and small, we removed the marketplace and a couple of drivers we would never use in our planned setup, like Linux containers, LXD and LXC, or vCenter, or some virtual networks and authentication drivers. In order to avoid conflicts between VNC and LeanStore, we added a reserved port range for the DRBDs. Also, we tweaked some of Open Nebula's default settings by modifying the VMM exit KVM conf, the KVM RC, and the KVM probes for PCI detection. This was required to get an SIRV interface passed to the VM directly as a PCI device. There is an SIRV add on, but uh, to be honest, the way it worked was way too spooky for us. As we didn't need live migration features for that specific VM with that SRUV device, we thought it would be easier to just add this device via PCI pass-through. We also did some changes to the SSH client configuration, like forcing the use of an ED25519 key or auto-accepting new keys, which became obsolete later because we started using uh, signed host keys. To be on the safe side, we raised the file limit to 64K. 
In retrospect, this was a good idea because the default limit of 1k open files was way too low. Later, we switched from collect-d to one monitor d with OpenNebula 5.12. For LeanStore, we also raised the file limit to 64k. To restrict replication pairs to one site, we're using labels and the replicas on same directive. Otherwise, no major modifications were made to LeanStore. The DRBDs are created on a LVM thinball stored on an SSD RAID 1. We added a patch for Open Nebula to recognize crashed VMs and to perform appropriate actions. The background for this hack is that we have a class of VMs like the root servers that should always be kept alive even when losing its disk. Root servers keep their configuration in memory and they don't you know, save any important data to disk or read anything from disk once the service is up and running. Other VMs that require disk write access, like for collecting and saving statistics, uh, should halt immediately in case of a disk error so the other side can take over. We added a mount option for these VMs to immediately crash in case of a write error. So when this machine loses its quorum, it crashes, OpenNebula detects this and reboots the machine. If the quorum has recovered until the reboot was initialized, fine, then the VM comes up again freshly. If not, the VM is stuck in the bootloader prompt and another VM is fired up. We wrote our own Ansible modules to interact with the OpenNebula API as well as with LeanStore and some playbooks to roll out the whole setup with all of its modifications and to prepare a new remote IXP at a snap of your fingers. In Frankfurt, we have a machine which hosts OpenNebula, the LeanStore controller and a LeanStore satellite which is used for the tiebreaker devices. Shown here is a very simplified example with two remote IXPs, Site A and Site B, which hosts two hypervisors with LeanStore satellites each. Right now we have 20 sites running with the setup, which means 40 hypervisors. When deploying a VM, OpenNebula instructs the LeanStore controller to set up the DRBDs on the corresponding cluster, for example the cluster of Site A, by cloning a base image DRBD. The DRBD are set up as primary and secondary with protocol C, which means they are fully synchronous between both hypervisors. Additionally, to the DRBDs on the hypervisors, a discus DRBD is created on the controller's local satellite, which acts as a tiebreaker to avoid split-brain situations and scenarios where an automatic failover would start the VM on the other node while it's still running on the previous node. There are some pitfalls, though. Upgrading to the next major version might be tricky, like when we try to upgrade from LeanStore 1.9 to something like 1.12, our LeanStore database holding all the nodes, resource groups and resources messed up, we lost the majority of our tiebreakers as well as some resource groups and the whole setup looked odd. Fortunately, the satellite simply ignored whatever happened on the controller, so we could roll back and restore the broken devices manually. Also keep in mind always to raise the controller versions together with the satellites. The connection between a site in Asia or Africa and Frankfurt is not absolutely reliable, so it happens that the DRBDs lose their tiebreakers from time to time. But as long as the interconnect between both sides of a site remains stable, both hypervisors still have the quorum majority. Another thing is that with all these tiebreakers we have lots, and I mean lots, of connections between Frankfurt and some of the remote sites. Every hiccup of the remote connection spams the kernel ring buffer. If you don't care about split brain or do have a reliable manual fencing of a node, I guess it would be safe to remove the tiebreaker device. Then I would not recommend large distances between the primary and the secondary members of a DRBD, at least speaking for protocol B and C. The network latency adds to the disk latency and writing data will get quite slow. We're trying out a distance of around 600 kilometers now. Let's see what happens. Thank you. That was a great presentation, Felipe. Many thanks for contributing to this uh, 10th edition of the Open Nebula Conference with such an amazing use case. Uh, to everyone in the audience, I'm sure you found this session really inspiring. Don't forget to send your comments and questions through the chat. Thank you and see you in the next session.